Good morning, Year 9. Welcome to your next Jekyll and Hyde lesson. Uh, this is week 11, lesson 3. So, by now, you should have finished reading Jekyll and Hyde in its entirety and be ready to go on to some revision tasks. So that's what we're going to start with today. If you click the link on the slide that you can see now, it will take you to your retrieval quiz for this week and as it states, it will be based on numbers 28 to 30 of your knowledge retrieval sheet. So if you click the link when you are ready and complete the retrieval quiz, please. For our learning objectives today, then we're going to challenge ourselves to recap the narrative of Jekyll and Hyde. And we're going to aspire to explore Stevenson's authorial choices in Jekyll and Hyde. So, as I said previously, you have studied uh, the entire story of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Hopefully you are familiar with the plot and characters. We're going to recap key events in the novella and explore Stevenson's intentions. And then our future learning then will be to go on to explore Stevenson's use of setting and its significance in the novella. Your starter task for today's lesson is to watch the plot summary of Jekyll and Hyde that's linked below and to re-familiarise yourself with the narrative and the key events that occur throughout the novella. Now there's a challenge task as well, it's optional, but if you'd like to challenge yourself a bit more, um, you can create a mind map for each character and their actions as you are watching the video. So I'd like you to spend about five minutes on that task please. For this task, you simply need to put the key events of the novel into the correct order. So you will notice that the key events in red are in the correct order. So you just need to sort out the chronological order of the remaining key events. You may wish to edit or summarise the key events in your own words if you wish to do so. You have 12 minutes for this task. Well done. So I would like you now to compare your order of events with the correct order that you can see now. I'm not going to talk through each individual uh, key event, but I am going to just discuss some key quotes that you might have found. So for key event number two then, which is the door reminds Enfield of the person who lives there, and Mr Hyde, and recalls an incident where Hyde trampled over a young girl without feeling any apparent guilt, you might have got the quote, trampled calmly over the child's body. Um, here then, uh, Hyde is established straight away as an extremely vicious and ruthless man when he injures the young girl and doesn't show any remorse for it. We've got that oxymoron trampled calmly, which shows that Hyde doesn't sort of um, show any remorse for what he's done. He doesn't think there's anything wrong with that. It's part of his nature. The fact that he can trample someone calmly reinforces his viciousness. For key event number three then, which is Utterson is intrigued by Hyde and wants to find out more about him and so he begins to gather information and see if he can meet him. You might have the quote, if he be Mr Hyde, I shall be Mr Seek. So there's a bit of a pun there from Utterson, obviously based on the hide and seek game. Um, it shows then Utterson's sort of determination to seek out Mr Hyde, to find Mr Hyde, because Enfield sort of piqued his interest about him. Um, and we're taking on that journey as well as readers through Utterson's point of view. So for key event number five then, after two weeks, Utterson speaks to Jekyll at a mutual friend's dinner party. As a lawyer, Utterson has seen Jekyll's latest will, which names Hyde as a man to inherit his fortune. Jekyll tells Utterson not to worry and requests that he does not speak of Hyde anymore, as he has everything firmly under control. So obviously Utterson's a bit concerned here because, um, like I said, we know that Hyde's a dangerous man we know that he's done violent things we know utterson's met him and that he feels um uncomfortable by his appearance so obviously this is going to cause us some, con some concern about jekyll as a close friends and suddenly jekyll's leaving his fortune to to this violent man now a key quote for this plot point then might be uh, from jekyll the moment i choose i can be rid of mr hyde we know, of course, that later on in the novel, that's proven untrue because Hyde uh, starts to gain more control of Dr. Jekyll. Now, we know that jo Dr. Jekyll transforms into Hyde 
uh, upon drinking a potion. But as time goes on, um, like I said, Hyde starts to gain more control and he doesn't need the potion anymore to start to transform, which is obviously um, a real problem for Jekyll. So for key event number six then, after a year, Sir Danvers crew, a very well-respected individual, is murdered by Hyde. The murder weapon is Dr. Jekyll's walking cane, linking Utterson's friend to the crime. A maid who witnessed the attack is distraught at the sheer violence she saw. Utterson is now further motivated to solve this mystery and help his friend. So you might have got the quote there with ape-like fury, which is used to describe Hyde when he is attacking um, Sir Danvers' crew. Now, what that tells us then, his description of ape-like, is that um, he's quite a, a primitive, violent man. Um, and we know throughout the novel that theme is continued, is constantly um, sort of described through animalistic language. Um, and it also shows sort of um, his lack of morals, his lack of um, thought, perhaps, that it just acts on pure instinct. And finally, for the last key event, uh, Jekyll's letter tells the story of how he turned into Hyde. It began as a scientific curiosity in the duality of human nature, or good and evil, and his attempt to destroy the darker self. Eventually, however, he became addicted to the character of Hyde, who increasingly took over and destroyed him. Now, we know in the last chapter, um, everything is revealed through the letter that Lanyon is, uh, gives to Utterson. And it's written by Dr. Jekyll explaining everything um, to do with Hyde. So a key quote that you might have got for that then is, man is not truly one, but truly two. Now, obviously Jekyll knows this better than ever, anyone else through his experiments that link him to Mr. Hyde. Um, the fact that um, it links to that idea of a duality of human nature, how there's good and evil in all of us, and how uh, Jekyll was exploring the duality of human nature and the fact that he initially tried to destroy his evil self but it became too powerful and overtook him. For your writing task you'll be considering why Stevenson chooses to tell the story from Utterson's point of view rather from either of a titular character's points of view. Before we do any writing I'd like you to consider some ideas so I'd like to spend five minutes making any ideas, writing down any notes about why you think it's interesting for the reader to hear the story from Utterson's perspective rather than Jekyll or Hyde's. You may want to consider what we know about Utterson and his profession and the fact that he's got a close relationship with Jekyll. Well done. Here are some more possible ideas that you might want to include in your writing task. So Utterson is an upstanding member of Victorian society, so the reader trusts him. He is a, a lawyer and he is a typical Victorian gentleman. So he is uh, everything that a Victorian man would expect, would be expected to be. So therefore, he's a reliable narrator. You know, we as readers can trust what he is saying. He's also got a good close relationship with Jekyll and therefore is concerned for his well-being. Um, also, witnessing the events of a novel through Utterson's perspective creates both intrigue and suspense. The reader deduces the truth about Jekyll at the same time as Utterson whilst he reads a letter from his friend Lanyon. This allows the reader to share his horror upon learning the truth. So, like it says, obviously, we're looking at this from a revision perspective. So, now we know on second reading that um, Jekyll and Hyde were sort of one and the same all along. However, the first time reading it, we don't know that. And we find this out through Utterson's eyes. And it says this allows us to feel um, the shock and horror that Utterson feels as well. Now that we have had the opportunity to discuss some ideas, we're ready to complete the independent writing task. So just as a reminder then, the question is, why do you think Stevenson chooses to tell the story from Utterson's point of view, rather from either of the titular character's points of view? On the screen is a model in red font. So this is just to give you some idea of the kind of things that you can write to be successful in uh, responding to that question. 
So firstly, Stevenson's use of Utterson's perspective throughout the novella creates tension for the reader as they find out the truth about Jekyll at the same rate and pace as Utterson himself. All of the significant revelations of the plot are revealed through Utterson's point of view and this allows the reader to create their own ideas about who Mr Hyde is throughout the text. For example, it is through Utterson's perspective that the reader first learns of Hyde's ruthless behaviour when Enfield recounts how Hyde trampled calmly over the child's body. Utterson, fascinated by Hyde's story, decides to track Hyde down as shown by the quote, If he be Mr Hyde, I shall be Mr Seek. The persistence Utterson shows to find Hyde is then reflected onto the reader. Stevenson uses a pun Mr Seek to show Utterson's curious nature in discovering the truth about Mr Hyde which also makes the reader curious to know who Hyde is too. At this point in the novella, Utterson, like the reader, believes he is looking for somebody who is an entirely individual person. Suspense is therefore created throughout the narrative as Utterson slowly unravels the mysterious connection between Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde. That was just to give you an idea of the kind of things that you need to write. Now, for your independent response, I would like you to choose a different quote to the one that I have picked. You have got 15 minutes. On to our plenary then. Below are some provocations that are possible interpretations of the novel. So for each one, I would just like you to decide to what extent you agree with it. So the first one is that Hyde could be viewed as either Satan or personal temptation. The second one is that feminist critics might interpret the novel as a critique of the patriarchal society that has repressed Jekyll, tempting him to draw out his violent tendencies. The third possible interpretation is that Marxists will critique Victorian society for hoarding power from the poor and condemning them for their morals while secretly envying them. And lastly, like a person addicted to alcohol, narcotics or painkillers, Jekyll's indulgence begins as a means to express a dark part of his soul, but that shadow rapidly, rapidly sorry, begins to overtake his personality. So I will give you five minutes now to consider those interpretations to see how far you agree with them. You might want to use evidence from the novel to justify your ideas. This lesson's optional further studying tasks are to select from a choice of creating a table looking at the characteristics of and differences between Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde with a particular focus on how these link to the theme of the duality of man or you can read chapter one in its entirety and the text can be found online by following the link and make notes on the impression that we get of Utterson at the beginning of the novel. So next lesson, we'll be exploring the use of setting in the novella, which means you must revise numbers 30 to 32, which link to chapter 6 to the end of a novella, from your Jekyll and Hyde knowledge retrieval sheet for the retrieval task.